America loves its pickup trucks, and I mean those big full-size pickup trucks like the Ford F-150, Chevy Silverado, the GMC Sierra, and the Toyota Tundra, but compact and mid-size pickups seem to be making an unexpected resurgence, and Hyundai wants in on the action. My name is Omar, and this is the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. It's Hyundai, like Sunday. You guys remember that campaign? So Hyundai does want to compete in the pickup segment, but they don't want you to think of it as one. Instead, Hyundai calls this a sport adventure vehicle, and that's just marketing talk for, hey, we want to target those with an active and adventurous lifestyle. And hey, if you're feeling a little adventurous today, go crazy and hit that like button. I drop a new car review every week, so check back in once in a while. So let's get the obvious thing out of the way. This is based on the Hyundai Tucson crossover, and from the front end and sitting in the driver's seat, this is all Tucson. In fact, the ride quality is all Tucson. It doesn't feel very pickup-y at all, and that's not entirely a bad thing, is it? The Santa Cruz, just like the Tucson, is a very comfortable daily driver. The one that I'm testing here is powered by a 2.5-liter four-cylinder turbo engine pumping out 281 horsepower. You also have the choice of getting it with a 191 horsepower 2.5-liter four-cylinder that's not turbocharged. And that said, let's talk about some pickup-related things in relation to the new Ford Maverick because these two are the latest compact pickups that you can buy. The Santa Cruz has a max towing capacity of up to 5,000 pounds, which is 1,000 pounds more than the Ford Maverick. It has a payload capacity of 1,750 pounds, 250 pounds more than the tiny Ford. It also costs more than the Maverick. The Maverick starts at around $20,000. This starts right under $24,000. And that's totally understandable because this is a lot nicer inside. And I mean a lot, not to mention I think this looks way better than the Ford Maverick. Now, I don't want to keep you waiting because there are a lot of cool and unique things about the new Santa Cruz. So let me give you a quick tour and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy one. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, before we get into things like the pricing details, the trim levels and the engine options, let's take a look at some of the cool and interesting things that you should know about this little pickup truck. Since this is a pickup, let's start with all the pickup talk first, or should I call it a sport adventure vehicle because that's what Hyundai calls it. But I guess that makes sense in a way because anyone who seriously needs a pickup truck probably won't buy this. This is more about the adventurous lifestyle. But yeah, this is a unibody pickup that's obviously based on the Tucson. With that in mind, let's start by looking at the bed. You can access the bed the traditional way by pulling the handle on the back, or you can use the key to drop the tailgate like this. Or if you have the activity package, which isn't available on every Santa Cruz, and I'll explain all that in my pricing breakdown in a few minutes. But yeah, if you have the activity package, you get a lockable tonneau cover which you can open just by pulling this latch and sliding it back. Specs wise, this is only a four foot bed, so you're not going to be able to fit any giant items back here. Your payload capacity comes in at 1,750 pounds. Now the bed isn't all the storage you have because there is some extra space underneath the bed. Lift right here where it says open and you'll find some extra hidden storage right here. That's pretty cool. What's cooler is that you can actually fill this area up with ice if you're going out to a tailgate party to keep your drinks cool. Why? because you also have a little drain right here to get rid of any melted ice or water or whatever you have in here. And that's not all. You also have tiny little storage areas on each side of the bed as well. The one on the right actually has a power outlet in case you need to power anything while you're out partying or camping. Oh, and really quick, you have a step right here just in case you want to hop into the bed. You also have some LED bed lights just in case you want to see what items you have back here at nighttime. And check this out, you also have a tiny little rear window in case you want to slide something through that's a bit longer in length. But this window is pretty tiny. Now, all these odd adventurous vehicles always have some interesting Easter eggs and the Santa Cruz has a few. Look at the step in the back and you'll see a tiny profile of a Santa Cruz right here in the middle of these triangles. You'll also see one hidden right here on each side of the bed rails. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. And then a very odd placement, each wheel arch also has a tiny little profile of the Santa Cruz on each wheel. It looks okay in black, but I'm sure in white, that really stands out. Now, if you look in the taillights, you'll see designed by California because that's where the Santa Cruz was actually designed, right here in the United States. And if you look right below that, you'll see a box with the letters HDNA, which stands for Hyundai Design North America in Irvine, California. 
Now there are a bunch of other cool and interesting things in here and I've tested a lot of the new Hyundai models and you can find a deeper dive into those cool features in those reviews. So I'll link some in the description below, but don't worry because I'm not gonna leave you hanging. So let's do a quick rapid fire session covering some of the more important ones. You've got a digital gauge cluster display and it's pretty informative. You don't have a full screen map view, but it does have some awesome animations as you circle through the drive modes. Odd thing here is that when you pop it into sport mode, the Santa Cruz is actually on a track. Who out there is tracking the Santa Cruz? One of my favorite features on all new Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis models are the blind spot cameras right here in the gauge cluster. Very, very useful. And again, I wish more automakers would do that. Now I did notice that the Santa Cruz doesn't get things like sounds of nature because I guess you're already supposed to be in nature with the Santa Cruz. You don't get a smart tailgate that allows you to pop open the tailgate just by having your key in close proximity. I think that would have been a cool option here. Oh, and you also don't get smart pack on the Santa Cruz. No idea why. All right, now let's talk about pricing. Pricing for the Santa Cruz, the base SE model starts at $23,990, and it goes all the way up to the limited model at $39,720. As tested here, you're looking at $41,100. So yes, the SE is your base model with front wheel drive, and I don't think many buying the Santa Cruz will opt for this one. Not to mention, the base one doesn't even come with the activity package, which adds things like the integrated tonal cover, a sunroof. It'll also add roof side rails, the really cool rear sliding grass, even though it's a little tiny. It also adds that outlet in the bed, the dual C channel utility track on the bed rail, LED bed lighting so you can see what's going on here at nighttime. You get a 10.25 inch digital gauge cluster display, and you also get a wireless charger. All of that is part of the activity package. Now you can go for the SEL, which is the next level up from the SE, but there the activity package will cost you an extra $3,270. So at that point, I think it makes sense to just go for the SEL premium, which gives you the activity package as standard. And that's where you will get H-Track all-wheel drive as standard for now, which I should mention you can add on the SE and the SEL for an extra 1500 bucks. The SEL Premium also gives you the better engine and much more. Now, when it comes to the two top trims, the SEL Premium versus the Limited, the only major differences are that the Limited will give you things like the 10.25 inch touchscreen display for the infotainment system. Keep in mind though, the upgraded infotainment system doesn't give you wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto. All the other trims get that with a smaller eight inch touchscreen display. So if wireless phone connectivity is important to you, don't go for the top end limited. Nonetheless, the limited does add heated and cooled front seats along with the heated steering wheel. By the way, I should mention that you do get heated seats on SC trims and above. But yeah, the limited Santa Cruz just makes things a little bit more luxurious with really nice leather trim seats. You also get the blind spot cameras, which are awesome. And you also get a surround view camera only in the limited trim. Let's talk horsepower and torque. My test model here specifically is powered by a 2.5 liter four cylinder turbo engine pumping out 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque, and that's made it to an eight-speed wet dual-clutch transmission. The base SE and SEL are powered by a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine pumping out 191 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque, and they're made it to a regular eight-speed automatic transmission without the dual-clutch. Now, if you plan on doing any towing, make sure you go for the four-cylinder turbo option because that will give you a 5,000-pound towing capacity while the non-turbo engine will give you 3,500 pounds. Now, I'm not sure how many people really care about the zero to 60 time on this, but the Santa Cruz will go from zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds, and it has a top speed of 120 miles an hour. Drive modes wise, you're working with normal, sport, smart, and snow. And I just realized that sport is the only time where this does that cool animation. Otherwise, everything else looks the same. Now let's take a look at the exterior design because in the front, it looks exactly like the vehicle that it's based on, the Tucson. Just like the Tucson, you get LED daytime running lights that are hidden within the grill, which I think look really, really cool, while the headlamps are actually placed right down here below the daytime running lights. I like this on the front end of the Tucson and I definitely like it here. Now from the B pillar back, this is all pickup. Do I like it? Honestly, it's not bad. At first, I was a bit put off by the fact that it didn't look like the Santa Cruz concept, that we saw in 2015, but this isn't really that bad at all. By the way, two interesting items I wanted to point out about the rear design is that the taillights are designed in the shape of arrows. And then you have this giant Santa Cruz stamp on the tailgate, just so everyone behind you knows 
how adventurous and unique you are and how unique and adventurous your vehicle is. But yeah, let me know what you think about the exterior design of the Santa Cruz in the comments below. All right, let's check out the inside of the Santa Cruz. And yeah, it's pretty much the same interior as the Tucson. Not much difference here at all. That said, this interior is definitely sharper looking than the ones you'll find on competitors like the Ford Maverick. Especially in this high-end limited trim, everything in here is laid out really nicely. Everything feels very high quality, feels more luxurious than the competition. And honestly, you wouldn't think that you're driving a pickup until you step outside and saw the bed. The only major differences that you'll notice inside between the Santa Cruz and the Tucson is the rear glass access and the fact that the Santa Cruz has some hidden storage under the rear seats, which is very common for pickups. So does the Santa Cruz lose any rear legroom compared to the Hyundai Tucson? Of course it does. You have a total of 36.5 inches of legroom back here. I'm about six foot tall. That's my seating position, as you can see. Not a lot of room. I believe the Tucson has around 41 inches of rear legroom. So if you need legroom, definitely go for the Tucson. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the Santa Cruz stacks up against the competition, let me point out a few random things that I love to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front for the front passengers and the rear passengers get a cup holder right here within the door. One right here and one right there. Here are what the keys look like to the Santa Cruz. No smart pock here at all. You just have a hold button for the trunk and that's really about it. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. Pretty solid indeed. Charging game wise, you get a wireless charger right there and one USB-A port for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity and one USB-A port just for charging. Rear passengers are working with two USB-A ports right there. And here is how the indicator and horn sound on the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz indicator first. Same old Hyundai indicator, now for the horn sound. Pretty solid. And now that I've given you a tour of the new Hyundai Santa Cruz pickup, let me give you my opinion on whether or not if you should consider buying one. All right, let's get to it. So should you consider buying this new Hyundai pickup? Well, if you want something unique and if you're somebody that has an active lifestyle and likes to do outdoorsy things like camping and hiking, the Santa Cruz should fit perfectly into your life. Do I recommend it over the Ford Maverick? Yes, if spending an extra $3,995 won't hurt you, this is a much better option than the Maverick. Ironically, it can do pick up things better than the Maverick, not to mention it looks better than the Maverick and has a much better interior. Should you buy it over the Honda Ridgeline? Well, the Ridgeline is a little bit bigger than the Santa Cruz, so you might want to give that some thought. Overall, I like the Santa Cruz. I definitely think it's a unique vehicle, and I think Hyundai will sell quite a few of these. I don't think it'll be a super smash blockbuster hit, but it will do the job for you if you live an active lifestyle. I have had people come up to me in grocery park parking lots and take photos of it and talk to me about it. People driving by giving me thumbs up. And that always helps me kind of realize how much anticipation is behind a certain vehicle that I'm test driving. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, peace. And you guys have to stop doubting Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis. I'm tired of that. These guys are killing the game in every segment.